Wow, it's November 5th. The end of the year is in sight. We got to go to work. Welcome to Mike Ferry TV. It's the week of November 5th. I'm excited to have you with us today. Last week, we spent some time talking about what I believe is the most important step in the whole process of selling homes in a downward trending market. I'd like to this week spend a little bit of time on a common problem that most agents face. We get a lead, we follow up effectively, we set an appointment, we pre-qualify. We go out and do the best job we can do, whether it be a buyer or seller, to present to them the property they're trying to buy and or why they should list with us. We're very passionate about it, you feel good, you've made a great presentation, and then they give you two or three objections, which is like a slap in the face sometimes. And often, even the best agents are caught off guard. Now, I want to spend a little time today, and I've got a list of thoughts here for you on handling objections that I think can help you when these things come up. First of all, I want to say to you the most important thing I can say to you. If you sit down and take the last 12, 18 months of your career, or if you're new to the business, take find two or three agents that have been successful in the last 12, 18 months of their career. And I want you to make a list, put buyer on one side, seller on the other. And I want you to make a list of the common objections that you receive when you're out showing property to a buyer or the common objections you receive when you're out working with a potential seller. Because the truth is there are just a handful of common objections I have shared for 43 years, this very brief short story. My broker, Pat McVeigh, incredible guy, passed away last year, unfortunately. Patrick McVeigh walks into me, my office, my first week in the business, takes out a piece of paper, hands it to me, said, look at that paper. I said, yes, sir. It said common objections from a seller. And he had listed, I don't know, seven or eight common objections. I want to think it over. I've got a friend in the business. I want to compare companies. I want a higher price. I want you to cut your commission. I want to give you a shorter listing. Common objections the sellers give. I said, okay, thank you. All right, memorize an answer between now and next week when I see you again. I said, where do I get the answers? He said, find out from people in the office or make one up. Well, I went around the office and I said, okay, here's the objection. Give me an answer. And they all looked at me. They had that blank stare. Nice people, good agents, but blank stares. So I started making up my own answers to these objections. That was 45 years ago. Pat walks in the next week. Give me the list. I hand it to him. He said, all right, I want you to cut the commission. I smiled and said, no, any other questions? He said, no. I said, sign the contract, please. He goes, okay. All right, Mike, I've got an objection here. I've got a friend in the business. You know, almost everybody does. May I ask, why did you not list with your friend and why am I here? I assume it's because you want to get the home sold. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Sign the contract so I can start. So I made up answers. They weren't the best answers. They're certainly better trainers with better answers. But my answers were direct, understandable, simple to the point, and common sense. So the first thing I want you to do when it comes to handling objections is make the two lists. Buyers and sellers, common objections. And inside the Mike Ferry Organization Network, inside our website, we have all the answers printed for you to download and read, role play and practice, learn the answers, memorize, make them part of who you are. Because the catch is, in handling objections, so much of it is the confidence that you display. The confidence you display. They look at you and say, well, we like what you've had to say today, Mike, and we think you're a pretty good agent, but the agent last night said they would do it for less money. Will you cut your commission? And without hesitation, I smile and say, no, any other questions? And they say, well, why won't you do it? I said, because I don't do that. Any other questions? Well, no, sign the contract. And what's interesting is the confidence I display gets them to sign the contract. So the most important thing I can say to you is learn the objections, learn the answers, the confidence goes up, and you will get more contracts signed. Now, some of you are going to say, it can't be that easy. Well, you're right. If you say to yourself, it can't be that easy, I will guarantee you it's not going to be that easy. I've lasted 43 and a half years training real estate people how to sell real estate because I make things simple direct, to the point, and it's common sense. 
and my competitors will give you pages of answers this long. Simple objection, I want you to cut the commission. They'll give you seven paragraphs to repeat back. When the truth is, do you want to cut your commission? And the answer is no. Well, then tell them no any other questions. But you see, if you don't have the confidence in your response, you can't handle the problem. So I wrote down a couple of thoughts here. I wrote down an objection is a question in the mind of the customer that remains unanswered. Answer the question. Watch. I want you to cut your commission. Answer, no. Any other questions? Well, yes, the agent last night said they would do it. May I ask you why you didn't list with them since they were here? Well, we wanted to compare what you're doing to what they do. Well, let me ask you this question. Is there any comparison between what I offer and they offer? No, yours is much better. Great, can I make you a great deal? What's that? I am willing to work for free for the next 30, 60, 90, 180 days. How would you like if I work for free on the sale of your property? Well, how does that work? Well, how much commission do you pay me when we start? Well, I don't pay you anything. Good. So I'm going to work for free. I'm going to take all the risk in this transaction by working for free. But I'd like to ask this favor. When it sells, would you pay me the commission I've earned? Well, of course. Sign the contract. Let's start. Simple common sense. A question in the mind of the customer that remains unanswered versus, I wrote down, a condition is a statement of fact that you cannot do anything about, so move on. I want a million dollars for my house. Well, I showed you all the comps and the comps are all at 750. Doesn't matter, I want a million. If I can't get a million, I'm not going to sell. Well, guess what? You're not going to sell. Okay, that's a statement of fact you can't change. Well, why do you want a million? Because I owe 975. You owe 975 on a house that's only worth 650? Yeah, I kind of got over mortgaged. Kind of got over mortgaged. I can't help you. Thank you and leave. See, here's what we got to get clear in our minds, and I want you to listen to this. There's a direct correlation between the amount of objections I receive and the strength and quality of the confidence you show in your presentation. You show confidence. Now, if you've been to my seminars in the past, often people in the audience will challenge me with objections, and I allow that, and I, have, I like the participation. And then people go, oh my God, Mike is so great. They brought an objection, and he slammed them right back, and he got the contract signed. Well, <clears throat> I have the confidence to do the job because I know what needs to be said and asked next. All right, I wrote down this th really important thought. Keep working on strengthening the presentation as a method of not only bringing the seller to your side, but eliminating objections. Watch, people want to pay less because they don't see value. The higher the value in what you say, the more they're willing to pay. You know that. You buy things and pay this price because you see value. But you see something else, you only want to pay this price. Why? Because you don't see the value. People will pay for the value they see. Provide the highest value and they pay you the commission you want. And then I wrote down, you don't have to get objections on a regular basis. If you pre-qualify last week's conversation and you follow the scripts we give you very carefully, you don't have to get a lot of objections. You get objections because we're not sure of the motivation. We're not sure of what they're trying to accomplish. We haven't asked, what do you want for the property and what do you owe? We haven't asked, where are you moving to and how soon do you have to be there? But you ask those questions and then you find out the motivation, the problem that you can solve. And then I wrote down this simple thought and this would be the last thought. Handling objections is pri primarily mind over matter. When we remove the fears we have about learning the answers and practicing them daily, our mindset gets strong and we can go out and deal with the public virtually every day. I'm excited about what you can do in November and December. I'm excited about the questions that you forward throughout the course of the week. Keep up that good communication. But I'm most excited about the fact that you can build within yourself a strong, confident, productive, profitable professional real estate sales agent. We're here to help. Let us help. By the way, coming up in January is our annual production retreat. I'll talk about it more later. You don't want to miss that because I'm going to spend 
one and a half days as always on listing property and one and a half days on working with buyers and get, take you through all the techniques you need to know in 2019. Talk to you next week. Have a great week. See you very soon. Thanks for today.